Hey everybody, it's Brent in Central Arkansas. I've been asked to show how automatic watering works with the microgreens. And so this is where it all starts. This is what I call the distribution tank. Uh, a lot of people call these reservoirs because not only does the pump pump out nutrient uh, that our water that's loaded with nutrient, hydroponic nutrient, it also returns back in. And so this is what I call the distribution tank now. Outside the room, I'll show you in just a minute, I have a storage tank that already has pre-mixed master blend nutrients in it to the correct PPMs of about, I think it's right at between eight and 900 here. For the winter grows, I tend to strengthen a little bit because the plants don't use as much water, uh, transpire as much water. So you can strengthen the nutrients quite a bit. Um, so yeah, this once this is uh, obviously lowered, you'll see that water comes out um, of the little float valve here. Okay, so that that keeps it up. That keeps the water le level up and uh, what's called top up. Now the plants when they use this nutrient it'll begin to lower and then it'll fill from the storage tank it always keeps it up with fresh nutrient the pump is uh, uh what is that 370 390 it's an eco plus uh pump and it's i believe it's uh well it's a 370 or 390 i'll put it in the video regardless so it pumps straight out it's got a backflow valve right here that just prevents the uh, um, piping from flowing back out when, once it's um, uh, pumped out and uh, let me, well let me explain why I do that let me take you over here if you look here the pipes have a top hat grommet which is just a rubber grommet here and this is a feed pipe and it's got quarter inch tubing that comes up to the planter here and this is all growing in what I call fawn, and that's a drip type system. It drips down into the gutters here and then flows back into the distribution tank right over there. Okay, now if I didn't have the backflow valve on, all these tubes would empty back down into this pipe, and this pipe would drain backwards all the way into the tank. So when I turn the so when the pump cycles again, it has to fill all the lines and all the tubing and all that before it'll start spitting water into the uh, containers so that's what the backflow valves it keeps the water there's water in it all the way up to here um, probably pretty close anyway so when it starts watering it all starts dripping in every pot keeps it even now if you look on the right side you see the float valve there you've got a tube coming in that goes through the wall into the next room of the shed and the reason why I did that is because uh, room space in here really uh, a big 55 gallon um, drum in here would take up too much space and it's it, space is critical for this for what I do in here all right what you can't see back over there because I've got plastic and stuff around it to keep it from freezing is um, the tube it comes through into the structure here that I built to support the weight of the 55 gallon drum and this is what it looks like. I got a piece of styrofoam in there and I've got the tubing that's coming out of the wall. You'll see that back over here and it comes up to a Y up here. Let me see if I got it in the picture. Yeah. Um, and that's how it, it flows down into uh, the reservoir, the distribution tank in the uh, greenhouse portion of this. Now this, the Y has two valves on it. One goes to this tube here. And what that does, it allows me to siphon off nutrient for whatever I want to use it for. The other one uh, has a valve that can be turned off here, and that goes, like I said, to the distribution tank in the other room. Now, this worked really good last year, having it kind of insulated here with just a sheet of plastic over here. And that's because this, all of this nutrient water also takes a long time to freeze. And the that... Uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, convection, 
uh, the the warmth from the water keeps this area down here the little pipe and the tubing and all that from freezing too all right let's go up into the 55 gallon this is just a regular 55 gallon food grade uh, that I turned upside down and plumbed uh, to that valve that you see I cut a an opening here in the top let me see if you can see here yeah and I attached just some zip types here and a handle just so I could open and close this but this is where I add all the nutrient and so what I do is I take a gallon jug uh, two gallon jugs one for master blend and Epsom salt and the other one for uh, calcium nitrate and I bring them into the house and I fill them full of water hot water and what that does is it allows me to um, well mix the nutrient a lot faster because it's dry nutrient let me show you the nutrient so I have two white five gallon drums here five gallon buckets rather and they have I think it's called a gamma lid it's just uh, a snap-on portion here uh, that you push down onto any five gallon bucket and then you can close it by uh, screwing it down now, I don't remember it was a really long time ago. I think maybe Brock Hughes, who's no longer on the internet. I think he's the one to turn me on to this, but I'm not sure. Anyway, it's a great way to store your salts, your nutrients, whatever you want to call it. And that's Master Blend. I get Master Blend from Morgan County Seeds, and I usually get it in, um, I think it comes in a 25 gallon, 25, excuse me, 25 pound sack. And so, and that's what it looks like. It's just dry nutrient. You get a lot more for your buck when you mix uh, nutrient uh, dry instead of buying it. Uh, let me see if I can get this lid off. Anyway, um, it doesn't. What's in here is Epsom salt, and this is just one of my creamer containers. And I get Epsom salt from Walmart, and it's also got a little cup inside there too. Um, so Epsom salt master blend. And I know when I put the master blend to this level right here, that is a 55 gallon mark. So all I have to do is just put this in there and I pour it through a funnel into that hot water gallon jug that I got from the house. Let me open the calcium nitrate and show you how I put the dry chemicals into the gallon jug. All right, you can see here I've got the same cup and I know if I fill calcium nitrate to there, that'll that's for the... Uh, gallons so this is what I use I just put this funnel in the one gallon hot water to the level that's on this cup and then I shake it and I do that with master blend I shake it for a while then I add Epsom salt to the same master blend uh, one gallon container so in one gallon of hot water I've got master blend and Epsom salt and another gallon hot container is their milk jugs I put uh, calcium nitrate now, I wish I would have thought to do this a couple days ago when I, when I filled this, but all I do is I take a garden hose in here, it's got a sprayer attached to it, and I put it on the bottom and I point it in one direction. And what that does is it spins the water as it fills. I take the one gallon jug that's got uh, Master Blend and Epsom salt and I pour it in slowly, and the spinning water mixes it uh, for, actually it's already mixed, all it has to do is incorporate it into the coming in water and then after that fills to about 25 to 50 percent I'll add the calcium nitrate into it slowly and the water will spin it till it's level and that's all I do to mix the nutrients just so you have a visual I, these are my gallon jugs or just milk jugs have been rinsed out okay now we're back to we're going to just uh, have, go through a distribution cycle. So when the pump turns on, it's on a timer. You can see the timer there, and it cuts on right now for one minute every hour, except um, I think uh, midnight, two o'clock, and like four o'clock. And that's because there's only 20 settings on that. So I, basically, what I wanted to do was turn the pump on for one minute every hour. And the reason why I changed it to that is to keep a consistent watering for the microgreens themselves. Before, I had the timer on for three minutes, three times a day. And I think it was like seven, 11, and four, something like three or four. So that, and that's all I did because 
all the uh, this pump and nutrient not only feeds the microgreens it feeds everything else in the greenhouse in the fawn system and so um, yeah so when it turns on um, this valve here is the microgreens valve and all that is it's just a T here that goes down to a P let me see if I can pull this up and show you it goes down to a portion of piece PVC valve it's capped and on this side over here is a grommet that goes into the PCV PVC piece and it's got a piece of quarter inch tubing and that tubing goes all the way up it comes out here you can see it coming in here all the way across over here wraps around for extra stability comes up and goes into this little I guess you call it elaborate system uh, that goes to drippers and it's just basically T's and four ways um, dripper connections and so I drilled in three eighths inch holes and I put these rubber quarter inch top hat grommets through and then I put a piece of vinyl tubing through and on the other side I put uh, just a dripper now I don't you don't have to put a dripper on here um, and you don't have to do it as evenly distributed throughout I just put the drippers on there to keep it even because if I didn't uh, that little 396 that's what the pump is it's a 396 in there that 396 is not powerful enough to do the entire greenhouse and the microgreens so I put the drippers on that and that way it allows some back pressure so it does everything in the greenhouse just great if you want to avoid this you can remove the drippers and you can get a bigger pump like a thousand gallons per hour but really just it just depends on how much you're feeding now I keep a lid on my reservoir here distribution reservoir and um, yeah that keeps everything out obviously and it also serves as an extra table here because the um, yeah the space in here is really tight okay as mentioned in the previous video up here in the tray there is a level drain back here that's a top hat grommet with a piece of vinyl hose it's come up here it's just flipped around backwards and I got a secondary drain right here if it if the water level gets too high or gets clogged or whatever and if it does it's got clogged a couple times with a little debris like you see around here all I do is just blow into the hose from the distribution tank down here all right back in here real quick I've got one of the returns here and the other one here so I've got two returns from the microgreens tray uh, NFT is what it's it's a form of hydroponics called NFT which is nutrient film technique but but the uh, drains drain back into the main distribution tank here otherwise known as a reservoir all right I'm down here at the timer I'm gonna manually cycle it for you so you can see for two minutes all right the pump is cut on it's flowing not only to the microgreens table as you can see there it's coming out of all the drippers and entire greenhouse all right so let's go back up here to the microgreens table and I've removed everything off of it so you can get a what's underneath look at it and you can see how it functions here all the drippers are on and they go down the liquid goes down these little channels more or less when there's roots when a tray is on here when there's roots the water wicks and amongst each other and it covers all the roots so even if a channel is dry you don't have to worry about it because the water finds all the other roots and in fact an area of the table that's exposed will dry between waterings but if you lift the tray it is absolutely soaked underneath there with water still because the roots hold on to it uh, so yeah so that's what it is it's all coming down here it's got a very slight elevation down here it all drains down this way and there's a little bit more elevation on this leg than this one so it kind of puts it all in this corner it goes back down into that corner where the drain is there it is it's starting to come out now there will be some debris from time to time 
a little better or a bigger drain would probably resolve that, but it's really, really not an issue. Otherwise, I would have changed it right now. So, that's everything. Drains from this way, this way, hits all the roots in a, in a film of water. Originally, I had used this small LED for the microgreens, and that was not enough, and I paid the price. Now up here I've got, I don't want to put the camera directly in, I've got a brighter, as you can see down here, a brighter LED. i got some little tomatoes going here and other things going on in these, but I believe that um, the cotyledons were a little small and I didn't get quick growth as quick as I should have because there was not enough lighting. In fact, I'm quite certain of it. So I've got a couple more things going on right now. These are uh, in this container here and this container here, and they're more difficult pushing the limits, so it's not going to be a regular grow. So I, I don't have in mind to show you the difference between the poor lighting and this bright lighting at this moment, but I will address it in the future. And I hope, um, yeah, I hope the increased light also helps significantly. I can tell you the little tomatoes here really like it. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, you need a good lighting source, you need a control temperature. Like right now, it's early evening, you can kind of see outside, the sun is set. Uh, it is 77 degrees in here, the relative humidity is pretty high uh, for some reason right now. But yeah, it, it'll go down, I increase the heat during the night, I don't let it get below 70 now at night either. Even when the temperatures are getting in the 20s, this room will stay uh, higher than that. So, uh, the last thing is, if um, I do have a video up on how I made this table here, um, microgreens table, just do a search on the channel and you can find that. That is pretty much it, guys. If anybody's interested in doing no medium or nutrient film technique microgreens or anything like that, I my only real hope is that uh, maybe I spark some ideas for you. Um, that's really all the only reason why I do this. I just, I do what I want to do. I share it. And if you can get something from it, that makes me happy. And if you can't, I'm sorry. I uh, hope you stay anyway. This is it, Brent. We'll see you later. Well, that wraps up this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please comment, like, and subscribe. In order to subscribe, all you got to do is click the button here. We'll put a check mark next to it. If you want to get notification the next time I make a video, click on the bell here. Check here and hit save. You guys take care.